go back now to July 12th, and we are on our way to look at a potential space for uh, the next moon base. Uh, if it doesn't end up being the next moon base, you won't be seeing this footage, but if it is, I'll be glad we have it. So it's the idea that the idea is that there'll be access to the bathroom without going through the right now it's like three minutes a lot of cooking in camp, which are really just 75 to 85 watts of bells. It was amazing. Well, things are potentially moving fast now. We put up the YouTube update about the move on Thursday night. And um, it's Sunday and we're going to a potential place to meet with a contractor to see if they can renovate it to our specifications. Because it turns out, there's n there does not exist office space that does what we need it to do by default. So we need to get the landlord to move some walls around. All the walls in this room basically yeah. Yeah. yeah, and this is all coming out. This basically, I think we're- Basically all the interior walls. And, and I would say irritatingly, our current office space is pretty close. Our current office space is pretty close, but as it turns out, if we have to move anyway, our current office space is not big enough. Well, I mean, and if you're going to move, don't move to a smaller place. Move to a bigger place. Exactly. Oh, we could not move to a smaller place. Can you imagine? Today's Monday, the 24th of July, and uh, one way or another we got to move something somewhere fairly soon. And this is all stuff of ours that was upstairs in the, in the warehouse. Uh, but we don't want to move it all if we have to, if we don't have to. So I'm going to take some time to sort through it and see what we can keep and what we can toss. It doesn't look like much, but it's it's a start. I don't know what we're gonna do with Dick Friend over here. And uh, I gotta figure out a way to deal with all these old t-shirts we got. I really wanna get them out there somehow, but the logistics of doing an online garage sale are kind of just not practical. So, I don't know, we'll figure something out. This has been a start anyway. The rest of the moon base also needs a good ream. We have a lot of stuff. This will do for now though. Quick update, it's midnight on Tuesday the 25th. Yeah, and uh, we just got uh, one of the last pieces of paperwork that basically says that the landlord agrees with what we want to do and they agree with we agree with what they want to do, and uh, um, we've signed off on it. And so, all going well, we should have a new moon base. What up? <laughs> it's your boy James. Uh, we're moving today. Wait, what day is it today? It's uh, it's it's, it's true. It's Saturday. It's August fifth. Um, today we are starting to move. We actually have to be out of here in 10 days, August 15th. So uh, the plan is get as much done today as possible. So anything you see on camera for, I guess, the next like week and a half, the office is going to look pretty bare. But I think it's going to be good. Ben, as the newest member of Loading Ready Run, yeah. sit in that box. I'm getting in the box oh, so, you can, box. so you can't he's gonna, leave me he's, behind. He's going to break the box. You just broke the box. It's fine. You have to pack the whole moon base. Oh, that's fair. That's the new boy. Can I at least get lunch? No. Oh. Well, you can get lunch 
after you've packed the whole moon base. You guys are wearing the same shirt. I know. It's, nice? it's embarrassing. Like father, like son. Why are you always <laughs> embarrassed of me? <laughs> okay. It's That's weird fine. when parents dress like their kids. We have that space down the hall, right? Yep. So, I everything should just we should just probably just move everything down there so it's not piled up in here, yep. right? Um, so, the idea was four piles, one with boxes packed that are coming with us properly labeled. Two garbage, and we'll need to figure that out. Um, make judgment calls, and and we can sort of double check that everybody can sort of double check everything. Um, but there should be a lot of stuff we can get rid of. Three is sell. That's kind of trickier. Like some of the chairs, and we need to figure out what we're doing with those. But anything that is garbage or donate could also theoretically be sold. And then same with donate. So that's going to be mostly like props and costumes, but I'd also don't want to do a big purge of that. Um, so just yeah. Yeah. So. We're going to do something fun and dumb, probably. This is our last chance to uh, have second thoughts. No second thoughts. No second chances. Um. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Hang on. Let's rethink this. No! Okay. Oh, no, a piece fell. One singular piece was lost, but our, our overall average was great. Like, I would hire us. Among the many things we're going through today is um, a box of posters, um, various posters that uh, from like from our houses that we've had for years. Uh, like I have like some old posters from like the Matrix Reloaded and stuff in here. We found uh, Jeremy's poster from when he was uh, running for student council president in 2001. Which uh, this uh, this anonymous elk says you should you should vote for Jeremy. Uh, loading ready run wise, we found the uh, uh, banner for Lurcon, which uh, has some folds in it, but it's canvas, so that's fine. It's lasted very well. We found the original. Speaking of canvas prints, we found the original things for the shift banners, which we had to emergency like reprint. For Desert Bus 10, but we found the old one, so now we have two sets of shift banners, so that's nice. This is the uh, Loading Ready Run timeline. Loading Ready Run timeline of Doom from. I don't know who drew that on it because that wasn't in the video. From a video that we put up in 2003. This was like one of our very first videos. We thought it would be funny to like start with sort of like a retrospective. And it starts 65 million years ago and then predicts our entire future. And uh, it keeps going for some feet, but uh, I guess you can just watch the video, he says, about a video that's not available on YouTube right now. So these are the, um, the covers uh, for the cases, and you see there's also inside because they were clear cases uh, for the Loading Ready Run Season 1, Weeks 1 to 52, uh, All Everything Edition. That was, we had a, uh, the original version, the original DVDs, we had the All Everything Edition, which was like three discs or whatever, and then we had the Just the Good Stuff Edition, which was one disc of just what we thought were the big good things, which nobody bought. Not many people bought the All Everything Edition, but nobody bought the other one because if you're like a f enough of a fan to want a DVD, you want all of the things. Which was good, it, and it was good that nobody bought it because if like one person had bought it, that would have been super annoying because <laughs> we would have to like have a whole new print run just for that one thing. Interactive menus. This is actually, I was, I was quite happy with this. This was, you know, the cast of Loading Ready Run, or people who showed up in the videos at the time. Some of whom you will recognize and some not. Um, but I like that this is myself and Graham, um, who, you, as you know, Saunders, Stark. And notice how we're in the very middle. 
that was totally unintentional. This is alphabetical order. It's just for some reason the cast is like super back weighted on the alphabet. It's 3 p.m. And I would say we've probably been working for like an hour. No, I'm just joking. It's going pretty well. Um, there's still, it, it, it feels, I think Cam's the one who said it. It looks like a shit storm in here, which I think is a good thing when you're moving. So I think we're making progress. Nobody tell me! There's like a little police place right here where they sort of went down and we're like, there's this thing. How are you doing? Very sweaty. At uh, some point, the carbonated water tap was knocked open. I have been uh, sopping five liters of carbonated water out of the carpet between packing things. Oh my god. It's very gray. It's Wednesday, the 9th, and we haven't been here in a while, and it's looking good. So our current live studio isn't that big. It's 12 foot 6 by 12 foot 6, but it looks a lot bigger on camera. This room is a lot bigger than that room, so it should look proportionately a lot bigger on camera. <laughs> Although it might look I think. the same because we're going to be like splitting it and stuff. Yeah. It'll be better. It'll be good, but we do have more depth, right? Yeah. Like, if this set, can, if this set builds out to here, and then we have stuff held against it, and the cameras are here. That's still more depth for that set than we have now. And that's going down. Yeah, exactly. This is the podcast room, man. Yeah. This will be the nice and sturdy. It'll be the lighting grid. These will drill into the deck and then that'll all go up in the ceiling. It's Monday, August 7th now, and uh, we're moving the editing office into the kitchen because the building wants to get into the editing office so they can put a wall <laughs> in the middle of it because uh, that's actually a door. And their architect has determined that that's got to be the emergency exit. So they're, they're giving us a deal on rent for the month to get in here early, so... It's worthwhile. It's Friday the 11th, as you can see we have a, uh, a big bunch of uh, boxes of new gear and equipment for the new space. that We're just leaving boxed and we're going to move it. But one of those things is this 50-foot HDMI cable, which we're going to put through a wall, and by we I mean James. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. It's like we're professionals. Oh boy, this is very close and I'm sweaty and gross. Uh, we did it! Uh, which, god, the way I just make, that makes me sound so lame too. Um, <laughs> we successfully ran a cable, oh boy! This cable now goes up and over, and there's the excess, and 
down and comes out in that hole right there. Uh, we need to run another one from that hole up and over and down to this plate over here. Unfortunately, that uh, HDMI cable has not arrived yet. So that's probably gonna be something that we have to do after we move in, which is kind of a giant pain in the ass because all the ceiling tile is gonna be up, the lighting grid is gonna be up. Um, I'm not looking forward to it, but Beej and I did this one, so we don't have to do the next one. So, fuck you. Why, hello there! It's Loading Ready Run Moon Base Packing Day! I mean, Packing Day 2 of 2. Uh, lots of stuff is out of the Moon Base, and today we are clearing out the rest. That means Studio A, Studio B, the Equipment Room, the very computer I am trying to use right now. Paul, don't take this computer away from me, I need to get mail time out the door. But that's what we're doing today, it's gonna be very sweaty. The last packing day we packed all the, like, clothes and props and as much of the sort of day-to-day -day usage stuff in the office as we could, but we couldn't pack all of the uh, the studios because we were still doing streams. So that's today. Um, the hope is that Studio A, which is our streaming studio, is basically going to be kind of transplanted com in completely to the new place. Um, we probably can't just like lift the room on a forklift and move it to the new place, but it's all going to be packed up together and moved to the new place. Whereas Studio B um, is going to be a little bit more complicated because uh, uh, some of the stuff in Studio B is going to be spread throughout the rest of the stuff. And of course, there's our magnificent shelves of all the cool, crazy stuff in the background that we have to figure out what to do with. I'm hoping to take a picture of that or a couple pictures so we can use it as a green screen background for future usage. Uh, possibly, because we've had the stu the... Speaking of confusing everyone, just as a point of clarification, uh, when you were talking about transplanting Studio A, that's the new Studio A, whereas mm. currently it's Studio B. Because yes. we're, we're changing the names of them because of the where they are in, we, the, in the new space. So the current Studio B is going to be lifted up, taken over, and put down in what will then be Studio A. Although... The current Studio A will be spread across Studios B and C, I feel, uh, yeah, I feel mm. like maybe we need to come up with better names than just the letters. Yeah. The video streaming studio, the podcast studio, and the live streaming studio. Mm. Which I think mostly covers their uses. Yes. I mean, it's live streaming as opposed to the, the streaming that isn't live. One, separate words. The live streaming studio as opposed to the live streaming studio, which is technically all of them. Eh. She called one the fawns. One gets to be Bumble or Honey, and the other one gets to be Chuck. I'm still trying to process that. A. How much do you think we're gonna get for these video games? Oh, this is just like the old Bottle Depot uh, guessing game we used to play. Uh, I'm gonna say this whole thing will probably top out at about 125. Oh, I thought even lower. I'm gonna say like 100, Ian. Okay. These are very old games, and EB is like, yeah, I'll give you 50 cents for that. Do we get store credit or do we get cash, Graham? I don't think they give you cash anymore. All right, store credit it is. Darn, I really wanted to make it rain with quarters. Oh, Kathleen, we're gonna get so many fidget spinners. This way? Okay, so I'm here at Mayfair Mall and I thought, well, I have to park and we got all these games and we got a big van, so I don't wanna go to the EB downtown. And I thought, well, there's an EB in Mayfair Mall and unless they moved, I think where the EB was is gone. So now I'm gonna look up online these games are heavy, I don't want to wander the whole floor for where the fuck EB went. Alex, 
guess. 150 bucks. All right, 150. Beach, guess. Uh, I don't even know what I'm guessing for, so 240. <laughs> How much all those games traded in for? Oh, $38. <laughs> Good guess. Wrong. Uh, I'll go with $200. Total amount, not counting cent in the spare change, $551. For all those games? Yeah. Oh, and, and this is not counting a few games that he said, do not give to me, these will get better value on the street. Wow. Like what? what Which ones? Dark Souls 1, near. Oh. What, yeah. what's, what street? <laughs> the high oh, wait, streets. Did you take it? Was that cash or credit? We took credit. It's about 9 a.m. Just about. Almost. It's 8.52. 8.52. And we're waiting to get on the ferry to go to Vancouver. By we, I mean myself and Kathleen and Beach. Because despite uh, making a sizable online order for Ikea furniture and accoutrements, there's more that we need. And if we order them online, they will take forever to get here, and some of them aren't available online. So, day trip to Ikea's. Because there's two Ikea's in Vancouver, and we need to go to both of them to get all the stuff we need. What? Did you not know that? Nope. <laughs> There are two Ikeas in Vancouver, in Richmond and Coquitlam, and uh, the Richmond one is larger and closer to the ferry terminal, so typically when we're coming over to Vancouver to go to Ikea, we go to the Richmond one. Today, however, we're going to both because to build the new live set, we need 41, because I designed it this way, so it's my fault, 41 dark blue Eket shelves. And there were 20 available for online purchase, and 16 at the Richmond store, and 5 at this store. So we we're bought here, them all immediately. We bought them all. We're here for 5 cube shelves, and then we're going back to the other store. So here's, here's five of them. By the end of today, we're going to have 26 of them. 21 dark blue, five light blue. Uh, and that's a lot. And then another 35 or something. There's 62 total in this set. Blah. Holy Christ. Luckily, they go together pretty easily. Oh, good. So that's three, three carts full of stuff, not counting the things that we pay for at the checkout and then pick up at the warehouse across the parking lot, and also not counting all those cube units that we ordered in advance that we get to pick up at the, at the pickup window. So, um, not bad? What? Are you... You're in a prison. Yeah, of, of, of Ikea's design. I'm a little... This, this cardboard prison can't hold me. I better not do that. I don't want to break whatever the hell that is. Holy shit. A prison of Ikea's sleek Swedish design. Yeah. This is good, though. You know, it's comfy. It's, um... No, it isn't. <laughs> but can, can you move? All right, yeah, sure. I can. And, and and we have a safety bulwark here. That's Yeah, that's what this is doing, is keeping everything else from taking my fucking head off. Mm -hmm. The problem is I can't interfere with anything else in case stuff starts sliding around. But it shouldn't, because we've used every little bit of air in this space and filled it with cardboard and wood. I don't and know. And particle board. And particle board, that's true. 
And veneer. I, I feel pretty confident that this we're, we're going to get home with this. We're going to drive very carefully. Thank you so much. We've filled basically every available uh, cubic centimeter of space back here with flat pack or beach. Yeah, if it ain't flat pack, it's beach. <laughs> yeah, you know what they say at Ikea? If it ain't flat pack, it's it... beach. <laughs> now it's 20 past 11 and we're back at the moon base to unload the van beach is going to get james so we have one more body at least and uh the rest of them spent today packing up the rest of this so everything's ready to go for tomorrow which i gotta be back here at 8 a.m to meet the movers so impressed how much we got into your van, James? I am. Yeah, I was actually having a moment of terror because I was like, we're going to have to leave Beige behind. That's fine. <laughs> we're going to have to send, we're going to have to go and rent a car somewhere and load the car with what's not going to fit. I don't know why I sound tired. I didn't do any of the lifting well. I sound tired because yesterday the Ikea trip ran super late and then I was meeting the uh, movers here at 8 a.m. But that all went very efficiently. Everything's packed up and it's only 10. So then they're gonna go to the uh, new place and start unloading, which will be a neat trick because the new place isn't uh, done. It's fine. It just means that we don't know where we're gonna put everything. We went with plywood walls, uh, not by choice, but that's fine. So the plywood walls, this is something that they've started doing a lot recently. It's uh, favored by cool tech startups because it looks cool and, well, not tech, but it, it looks cool. And the reason that it's really popular is because it's, it's, a, it's a little cheaper than drywall, the, the materials, but you can actually get people to install it. Drywallers are a specific trade and there is so much construction in Victoria, you cannot get drywallers. They are all absolutely booked and presumably charging whatever the hell they want. And we needed to move in here like now. And so they went, well, if you want new walls and you have to move in, you're getting plywood. And we went, okay. Studio A, our first priority is HVAC, but we can't, can do nothing about that. So what's the first priority, Paul? First priority, well, second priority is uh, getting the streaming office back up.
for regular video game type streaming. Because we love you so much. Yeah. Meanwhile, in the storage room, we're putting up the, uh, the costume racks. Um, I like these walls because if you've watched any of, your, any of our other moving vlogs, you'll know that we've always had issues finding the studs. But the nice thing about this kind of wall is you can see where the seams are, which means I know there's a stud here, and I know there's a stud here, and I know there's a stud there, and it makes this much easier. For context, it's about four in the afternoon and um, we've just, everything got moved in today. It looks like a complete shitscape everywhere, um, but we gotta, we gotta get rolling. And so the priorities, as you saw, is getting video streaming broadcast back up and then getting the um, costume rack up so then we can get all the costumes up because the costume boxes are taking up an exorbitantly large amount of space and then that'll give us more space to work on getting other stuff together. We are organizing the prop room. It's very warm in here because there's no HVAC. <laughs> Look, we put a bed so you too can go to a dark, isolated place and go to sleep. No, actually, because people would nap in the moon base uh, on the couches and we thought, oh, wouldn't it be nice just to have a bed? So we got a, just a very simple IKEA twin bed. And look, when you turn off the lights, it's really dark in here. This is good for napping, if you don't mind napping in a huge closet. Extra space, extra space, extra space, extra space. This this won't be here. Extra space. That won't be here either, but hello, friend. Also, that means there's now so much more space in here, which is good, because this one's going to take a little bit of doing. Adam's in the new Studio A, streaming Dauntless all day, and we had three very, very large cardboard boxes arrive, full of the uh, sectional and sofas and everything for the friend zone. So I think we're gonna set that up while James and Beej are out getting things to construct more IKEA furniture for the equipment room. chairs for the live set so that we can uh, you know we can chill and have a panel show and we're doing this now because we can want to go to the recycling depot uh, before they close at five which is in an hour and so we want to take all of this with us could you grab the front of this chair I think we can just lift this right out of the box Aha. you know what let's leave them like this Okay, let's leave them wrapped in the foam. gets heavier the longer you hold it. So, it's uh, Saturday the 19th now, and uh, it's really coming together, but there's still lots to do. And today, one of the big things is the lighting grid for the big um, live studio. So it's partly done, 
for us, which is nice, but the uh, the last part is it's proving a little irritating. Basically what they did is uh, they drilled this uh, threaded rod directly into the concrete deck of the roof uh, so that we weren't hanging stuff off the T-bar, which is what we were doing before and we're still doing in the podcast room. But the point is, in here, we're having an actual lighting grid built of uh, three-quarter inch steel conduit that we can hang lights from. And it's anchored into the concrete deck so that, uh, say, the HVAC unit turns on, it won't, theoretically, vibrate the camera like we had at the old place because, again, everything was connected to the subceiling. Uh, so what we're doing today is uh, putting in the... There's, there's five pieces going one way, and we're putting in the five pieces going the other way so that everything's uh, stable and that we actually have more space to hang lights from. It involves using these clips that are an absolute ass pain. Um, they're sharp and angry and hurt, and uh, they're the only way to get the things up there. So, so you want to start your grant? Uh, sure. So we're gonna go like where are the clips? Basically in line with those ones. Yeah, that one, that that that, that works fine. Okay. Okay. So I think you're you're actually good to use the clip. The, the nice. ones that you use. Nice. I am so paranoid about getting one of those teeth in my skin. I know, right? Pinching it between the between the clip and the pipe. There's no way I'm getting it out without just tearing my hand. Yeah, and then just screaming for eight yes. hours, like and, and bleeding. Yeah, everywhere. lots of blood. actually didn't go that badly. Although, despite all our consternation about these fucking death clips, the only thing that drew blood was I nicked my shin on a cardboard box. It hurt. But the lighting grid's done. Right, so welcome to the equipment office. Uh, ben and I have been building a pegboard and uh, James has been mounting it. So we're actually just gonna put some nice metal flashing on there to cover it up and um, we tried duct tape, or not duct tape, we tried double sided tape and stuff, so James is going to hot glue it down. But we had an idea for how to try to finish the edge too. We take this piece, James has thought this up, and we cover it like that so everything stays nice and hidden and you don't actually have to see the ugly whatever edge. Can I say also yes. how happy I am that you gave us that stupid um, flexi cam? <coughs> The flexi what? The flexible camera. Oh yeah! Like the, the camera snake? We used it! We used it, yeah, to feed HDMI <laughs> up the wall. Yes! Because it's the only way we could do it. Did you just use the camera end without the camera on? Or? No, we used the camera so we could see where we were going. Uh, or So that we knew... <coughs> we couldn't see where we were going because it was all insulation. But we could tell... The camera told us whether or not the end was moving. Right. Or if it was stuck on something and just coiling in the wall. Okay. Fed it all the way up the wall from the outlet on the bottom so that Ian could reach down the wall from the other side, grab it, tie a string to it, and then and then pull it out. That must have been like the world's driest colonoscopy. <laughs> We're getting the lighting for Studio B, the new podcast set, together. And this one's on sort of LED lights, all of which are controllable via Bluetooth. So Ian's been messing around on his phone. Unfortunately, they appear to be controlled and by the same Bluetooth. They're controlled by the same Bluetooth, which is interesting. Uh, also, we don't have the quite the quite the right mounts. You can sort of see in the background that the light's just like right up against the ceiling, pointing dead forward, and we need it to point sort of you know down here. So we'll be we'll be getting new new mounts for that. Also, I figured something out that I'm quite pleased with. Um, acoustic foam is really expensive, and normal foam, like just sort of egg crate foam does enough of the good enough job that it would be fine, but it looks super ugly. But turns out on Amazon, you can get uh, hospital bedding foam uh, that's just like egg crate foam and quite cheap, but also blue, which uh, doesn't look nearly so unattractive and is on brand. So this room's gonna eventually have three uh, king, king size pieces of foam on the walls. And now with my new patented diet technique, the pounds just melt away. 
<laughs> it's Monday the 21st, and there's air. Dick Van Patten in Spaceballs. Air! Oh, isn't it nicer in here? It's so much nicer to have air. That's so good. Uh, only half of the place has has it. The working Other half HVAC. Is a, is a vacuum filled void? Uh, yeah, the other half is a void. Because this, uh, I think we've said this before, this was two units, and this passage was pushed them together so they're on different, um, different circuits. And that one was actually, like, broken, and that'll be fixed on... Wednesday, but there's air over here. And it's quieter than it was at the old place, it's way too. Quieter, yeah. Which is great for us. Which is nice because it's, it's really important. That's the fixed unit, which is an old fixed unit. So whatever the new one is might even be quieter. I hope so. So that's and our blinds are back. So that's making everything's going much more goodly. And uh, now we're gonna put up the third um, big pad in uh, Studio B. So now, with three different acoustic foam pads in here, we're sitting here for a podcast. That sound is pretty dead. It's not perfect, but it's pretty dead. If we can put some stuff up in the corners between the walls and the ceiling, I think that would be ideal. But as it is for now, it's pretty good. We bought 60-odd... Eket cubes, which are these cute little cubes. Uh, Graham already put a couple together. Uh, and they are very slick. They go together one, two, three, four, as the kind of showing off there. Um, but yeah, they snap together. And since we have so many of them to do, uh, Graham and I are going to get started on actually getting them done, or at least as many as we can. Because also we want to get all the cardboard. There's a stack of cardboard there, and there's going to be more of other places. We want to get all the cardboard out of here, at least I think by like Saturday or something. Uh, so yeah, I, it's they're like take three minutes to pop together, but there are 60 of them. That's 180 minutes if we work without stopping. That's three hours. So we better get busy. We did it. They're all, it's hard to tell, but this is actually, it's actually too deep. Two, two units deep. There's another whole wall of these at the back. So yeah, that should be all 62. So tomorrow, because they're doing the Crossing the Streams Ikea build tonight. So tomorrow we should be able to actually start arranging these uh, as sets. So that'll be nice. It's going to involve a lot of screwing these things together. So uh, what we're doing is um, we needed the gooseneck um, hanging tool that we used on the uh, LED lights for the LED lights because we've only got three of them. Uh, originally we had it poking in on the bottom here. So now what our plan is, is to put uh, a zap strap on this little ridge here on the lights and this one further down as the anchor point and then hang them from two more zap straps. Uh, my concern is uh, if it'll we'll be able to angle these at all, or if it's just going to hang flat. Which we'll see how it goes. But um, either way, uh, this this kind of just goes to show that we always have a little bit of desert bus jank in us at all times. <laughs> the camera can't see it. It's Ow. okay. <laughs> Speaking of which, what's Surge doing? Hi. Soundproofing. So, a bad point for sound is where the roof and the wall meet. So we're hoping this 45 degree foam will offset a lot of that. And I've got the fun job of hammering all of this in and not dying in the meantime. It's going well so far. See, it's Thursday, the 24th, and the plan, the hope, is to have this room, Studio B, in a good enough state by the end of today, that tomorrow we can finally record something in here, that being an episode of Tap Tap Concede. And uh, we have the chairs assembled, 
We don't have a table yet, so we're going to be using a different table in, for the time being. Um, the strip lights have fallen off the back of the television, so we've got to figure out a way to get those stuck on better. And um, Ben's dealing with uh, getting the lights actually hung properly in a way that we can aim them and not have them just pointing at the ceiling. I think we'll be fine. Yeah, I'm, I think this looks really good. I'm really stoked. We feel very uh, professional. Now. Yeah. <laughs> Unrelated, it's Ben's birthday. Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah, ha thanks. Ha I was going to be like, happy birthday, Ben, in the future when you're watching when this. You're, when you're editing this <laughs> this video. Yeah. You're looking real good today. We, we, uh, uh, Ben's going to be editing loading times now, and uh, we've thrown him in at the deep end because this is the first one. I'll be fully you, working. You've edited from the beginning, yeah. and this is gonna have like the most content for like any loading time this year. <laughs> so I'm gonna make it seem like this all came together with no problems yeah, whatsoever, no issues at all. It's Friday the 25th, and we're gonna record our first episode of Tap Tap Concede in uh, well, whenever this is done. We we've been having a lot of debates about this wall. We had a lot of different ideas about what this wall was going to look like. And um, uh, where we sort of settled, at least temporarily, was that, you know, that it would provisionally just be the wall with, with lights on it. And we realized that that maybe looked a little too Spartan. Like, it looked cool, but it was maybe too plain. Maybe uh, Paul said it looked a little, a little corporate. And we want to look professional, but we don't look corporate. So what we're doing is, we, we, we were talking about geometric patterns, some sort of like tessellating shapes, and then I was like, well, wait a minute, we have these left over from the old, from the old studio. What if we put these on the wall? Uh, and we think that that might look good. Just, just like a little bit, you know, make it look like recording studio. Even though these are not going to be very practical in terms of the sound deadening, considering all the other sound deadening we have in the room. But the thing is, we don't want to just go and glue this or nail this to the wall, um, because if we don't like it, it'll mark the wall. So Paul's idea, which was a very good idea, was to attach it to something else that we could then mount on the wall more easily. So as you see, these have all been mounted to a piece of cardboard <laughs> with hot glue. Which came from a TV. Which came from a TV that we can then uh, gaff tape to the wall so that uh, if we don't like it, then we can pull it off and try something else and it won't hurt the uh, finish of the wall. And hopefully, it will stay up there for the duration of the podcast. This afternoon is the AFK set and the beginnings of working on Studio C in, in real earnest. Uh, it's looking really good. I overestimated in my drawings, which were to scale, by the way, but it's never a perfect system. Um, and uh, I had uh, another one of these on the end here. But that comes out m more than we need. It, it, it encroaches into the room a little bit, and also it would... Do you see where Paul's... You see where the engineering desk is, it would push too far that way. So we probably don't need those, and the angles I think will work out will work out fine. We're trying to figure out what to do for the wall. Um, leaving it the plywood, uh, the two different kinds of wood clash weirdly. Painting it is a possibility, um, but it's annoying and expensive. We realized we had these curtains that we used to use in the live studio for um, keeping the light out, and it actually works really well. So. What we're about to do now is screw those four units together, attach a rope light to the back of them, and then um, I guess start putting stuff on the shelves. Yeah, so we're trying to nicely line up 
the shelves into nice, somewhat degree to angles. Let's go with 37 degrees. Is that right, Cam? Yeah, 37 degrees. Body that's, temperature. That's, <laughs> yeah, exactly. There, so the plan there, is 30. to take some of this steel strapping, cut off a piece, and put it like here, and then just run two screws into it to secure it. This is the new Studio C setup, which um, is sort of effectively replacing what was Studio A in the old moon base. Um, except everything that was in Studio A in the old moon base is now in Studio B, and so everything here is new. Basically, everything here is new. So we have a new computer that's super skookum and nice and quiet. Um, we've got this new mixing board, which is super skookum and can do stuff like, oh, look at that. Automated uh, control, so you can be like, today, you know, as you, like we're doing Bling Ray Live or something, you can uh, program it so that like, for that one, I want all those up, but then for this one, I want those ones up. And then I can quickly switch between those two. So in the other studio, you saw us messing around with the LED lights, and those are just pretty simple LED lights. They apparently are Bluetooth controlled, but what, what Ben's doing right now is is a whole different kind of lighting setup. And uh, it's something I'm familiar with from my days in doing uh, theater tech in high school, but it's not something I've done recently. But it is what something that Ben's dealt with recently, which is uh, our good friend DMX. and. X very much go and give it to you. What DMX is is a way to remotely control lights. It's, it's what you do in theater. You hook everything up by DMX, you chain them together, and then you control them from the board. Uh, in our case, we have a converter to run them into the computer so we can control them by USB. But we were talking about it ahead of time. I was like, yeah, I'm going to get all these great LED lights. Maybe you can help me, you know, focus them. And Ben just idly said, oh, are they going to be are they gonna be DMX controlled or what? And I was like, oh! They weren't, but we should. What we can do is set all these things up and then remotely from the computer, we can control the brightness and the color of the lights and set up, you know, like different kind of scenarios. We can have a, we can have different lights set up from when we're doing a tabletop game as opposed to when we're playing 1v1 Magic. And we can adjust that without having to climb up a ladder and change what's going on with the lights or adjust the lights on the back of them. We can do it all from the computer which is uh, very exciting, but it does mean that Ben's going to spend a lot of his time up a ladder this evening. So this stained glass window was made for us by a viewer named Emily, Tsukiya Kariyosagi, and uh, it, it has followed us like a wonderfully handmade albatross <laughs> since uh, Moonbase Mark III. Because what happened was, uh, she asked us for the dimensions for the window above the stairwell in Moonbase Mark III, for those of you who remember what that looks like. I think, I'm gonna say it's our fault that we gave uh, dimensions that were a quarter of an inch too wide, or too narrow, because this uh, this window did not fit in there. We gave like the outside dimensions. So like yeah, I think we like didn't account for the molding or something. Anyway, so uh, we were trying to figure out w where to put it in the in that moon base or how to mount it and couldn't figure it out and then ended up getting really busy and then it was living in a wonderfully designed crate that it that it came in and then it went with us to moon base delta where we were talking about maybe putting it sideways in one of the windows in the hallway between the hallway and the prop room we were thinking maybe there maybe one of the front windows weren't really sure but as you know now we were only there for a year and a half so then we got here and we were unpacking everything and we were like, okay, for sure we can find a place to finally put this somewhere. And, uh, and we did. It actually it, it fits there very nicely and it barely interferes with the operation of the, of the Venetian blinds.
Hi, it's Saturday, August 26th, and we are setting up Studio C. We've begun, uh, well, we, we, we've got the uh, AFK area kind of arranged neatly with regards to furniture, and we're now trying to furnish the shelves to make it look cool. Uh, we're getting all of our bona fides up, really. So, you know, we have um, our board games, we've got our tabletop games, we've got our card games, and uh, we have you know, miniatures, and all of our kind of swag. It's really exciting. As you may be already aware, the Crokinole board has been placed in a position of prominence in the friend zone, and uh, that's that, right? Well, no, because we still have to place the pieces somewhere, and because the Crokinole board is now easily movable from the friend zone to the studio where we'll be playing it, why don't we put our Crokinole pieces somewhere where they can be displayed prominently? Well, uh, instead of that, we're just going to put them in here, because it turns out that the crokinole boxes fit perfectly within the DM screen uh, tower of drawers. And so that is where we're going to keep our crokinole pieces, right next to where they're going to be played. So while we can't, like, fully construct the live set today, because we were they need to paint this wall and hopefully we'll be getting them to do that as soon as they possibly can but uh what we can do is sort of like lay it out and get an idea of what it's going to look like and make some decisions based on that and also like sort of like lash the end shelves together but i got one end up one one bookshelf bookshelf and uh this will be i think this will this will be tall enough to accommodate when people are standing and uh i think it's gonna look cool <laughs> So we have encountered an issue, which is that um, this this box here, which is for uh, giving power and HDMI to the to the TV, so we can float it on the wall, is too high. Um, we uh, we specified a certain height, and I think we specified it incorrectly or whatever. But the point is, it's too high because this TV, on my plan anyway, is meant to. Uh, float midpoint between these two vertical boxes, right here. Um, and uh, this will stick halfway up. So, and we don't want this to be visible because it will look bad. We can't move the box because the wall behind it will be visible. And so we'd have to replace this whole panel. Uh, so what we can do though, is uh, mount it such that it's midway between these boxes like this, which will still be fine, but it means that uh, the, the plan I have uh, isn't, isn't going to work, so I'm going to have to re, uh, uh, remap basically where the, the floating boxes go. Today on This or That, Football player or butt plug brand name? Mm. Oh boy. Dave Tenga. <laughs> butt plug? God damn it. Here we are in a very nearly completed Moonbase Mark V. We have our logo back up on the wall. There's no text yet, but we're probably going to add that. This was the wall separating the two units. We put in a nice huge archway pass-through. And uh, here is the new friend zone with our uh, nice sectional couches, big TV on the wall. We've now uh, mounted the um, crokinole board. Here's one of the editing offices, Kathleen's at work, because we now have 
two editing offices. That office is about the size of the previous editing office where we had three people at times, three people rammed in there working. And uh, weirdly, they asked for more space. Here's another editing office so that we, we took the two editing computers that are used most often and separated them so that people aren't always bumping their chairs into one another. Got our magic back up on the wall. This is now what we call Studio A. In the last moon base, we called the broadcasting studio, the video game broadcasting studio, Studio B, because it was on the right. We do them right to left, I don't know why. But this is Studio A now. This is video games, computer games, all the consoles are in here. And we have these uh, windows so that we can see in without opening the door and interrupting the stream. So as you can see, Paul is actually streaming right now. Ta-da! Here is the brand new and improved Bill Watt Memorial Food Zone. Um, we got some uh, cubbies, we've got lunch table, coat rack, the kegerator, we've got uh, wheat beer on tap right now, courtesy of Ian Horner, um, and then fridge and kitchen and garbage and, and all that boring stuff. But in the rest of the moon base is, is the stuff that I'm the most excited about. Back to the entry area. Uh, bathroom, which is exciting. We should probably clean that toilet, don't worry about it. This is now Studio B, because again, we're going left to right. This is the podcasting studio, and probably where Paul and I are going to do Running Start once we get that rolling back up. Um, I think this place looks great on camera. We've got these, these LED lights. Those ones we can add color to. There's LED rope lights behind the TV. We've got... <laughs> I think I talked about this already, but when you're soundproofing, actual acoustic foam is very expensive but egg crate foam for beds is a lot cheaper, it just looks like shit. But this stuff is egg crate foam for beds for hospitals. So it's blue, which is on brand, and actually looks pretty sweet in this room, and gets pretty pretty nice sound, which is, which is cool. Uh, improvement still to be made to this room is a custom uh, desk, custom podcasting desk. We want it to be wider than this so it can more comfortably seat four people. It's gonna be a little shallower and then it's going to come to a shallow point so that there'll be you'll have two people two people on one side two people on the other side so that if there's only two people they are sort of like slightly angled to one another like a I don't know like a news desk right coming around to this way we have the equipment room that room is also um, sound sound dampened this is the equipment room uh, which was always a mess before and is a mess now, but we haven't quite finished setting it up. Pegboard everywhere. Look at our networking. And a door that goes through to Studio C, which we'll go to momentarily, because it's the sort of the, it's the crown jewel of Moonbase Mark V. Um, but first, down the end of the hall, we have the new props and costumes room, which is huge and just keeps going and already needs a cleanup, but such is life. Uh, and uh, that joke in the crap shot was not a joke. We have a bed here with the giant dick butt. The dick butt's not going to stay. Uh, don't worry, he's going to a loving home. Um, but there's a bed here because sometimes people get tired and they would nap on the couches in the friend zone, which is fine. But it's like, we could we can offer something better. Let's let's have a have a bed back there. Right now the dick butt is like your punishment for taking care of yourself. <laughs> Studio C. This is where it's at. Very excited about this room. Um, we tried to give this room as much space as possible. When we were when we were looking at this unit, there was a big empty space here, um, but the storage room came further this way. And uh, basically, we looked at the plan and just tried to see like, can we get away with that much, with that narrow of a of a prop room? Because we don't. What we didn't want was like shelves on one side, co racks on the other, and then like a big wasted gulf of space in the middle because you don't need square footage between those things so we pushed that wall that way we arranged the studio b which is just through there and the equipment room in a way that that gives them the space they need which is just enough space studio b right now is roughly the same sort of square footage that our live podcast streaming space was in the last studio um and uh it's just arranged differently, so it's like a little shallower, but a wide-angle lens will take care of that. Because we wanted to give as much room to this space as we possibly could. And so on one side of the room, we have the new AFK set for 
tabletop games and Tinker Tailor and Magic the Gathering. And then on the other side of the room is the almost completed live set for which will be for feed dump and loading ready live. And if we do, you know, like the the sort of the the panel show entertainment that we do on loading ready live. And we now have cameras that live in here. These are Black Magic Studio cameras. They look ridiculous, but they're great. And we have them all rigged up to the new uh, computer. These now stay in the room, so we're not like, oh, we need the camera, but we were using it to stream, so we got to go unhook the cameras and everything. It's just they point that way for AFK, or we turn them around, and they point this way for the live set. This is the preview monitor. This rolls around and uh, gets out of the way. And then up top, of course, we were showing this off earlier, the lighting grid, which also was not cheap to install because it drills right into the concrete deck of the roof, um, but has been has already proven to be well worth it. And uh, we're just so happy with this space. And it's potentially, potentially where Desert Bus is going to be. We're not hard decided on that yet, but uh, we also have a big green screen as well in case we want a green screen. <laughs> The process to get the new moon base has definitely been a little bit more uh, hectic than we were originally hoping it would be, uh, but maybe that's better in the long run. You know, we are, as uh, everybody knows, pretty good at putting things off when it doesn't under a time limit. So maybe the fact that it was under such a tight time limit uh, inspired us to uh, make a bunch of stuff happen faster than it would have otherwise. This is so nice. It's so nice it actually feels like it shouldn't be our office. Like it's too professional and clean and there's too much space and there isn't a pile of garbage anywhere. And it just, it's, it's too nice to be our office sometimes. I'm sure we'll infest it and make it gross, but like right now it's just so nice. So, um, yeah, there's, there's Moonbase Mark V in brief. Um, thank you so much for making this possible because we, you took away all of our stress when people would, uh, when like the landlord or the contractor or suppliers would be like, you know, like, well, we can do that, but it's gonna cost X amount of money. We were able to say, okay, that it's worth it to us to have, you know, a lighting grid or to get the the right technology for these cameras, to get wireless mics, and you allowed us to do that. So, thank you hugely. Your uh, your, I I hope you feel you are seeing your contributions borne out because we love this place and we put a lot of hard work into it and uh, and and we're here for at least five years with an option to uh, renew for another five. So. We're not gonna get kicked out this time. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Cause we don't wanna move anytime soon. We love this place. And uh, hopefully you enjoy it too. Thank you so much. See you on the internet. Turns out when you run Moonbase Delta through an anagram generator, um, good things happen. I didn't put that up there though, that was... Beach? Who stuck that to my wall? <laughs>